Alrighty, gang, it's Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, the 24th of uh, November 2021. Welcome along to our daily little chat show. Coming to you from uh, the Chapel Hill Marina in Lincolnshire. I've just changed my little, little display at the uh, back there. Fantastic news. If you like old school, if you're offended, oh, the lefties are going to go mad. The woke lot are going to go mad on this. But two fantastic old television type things will be on for you around the Christmas period. One of which has started already. And that's Benny Hill. Benny Hill. Now, the modern young people will tell you it's sexist and it's terrible. It shouldn't be allowed. I think it was just a bit of fun. You never saw anything. You know what I mean? The story in the Daily Mail, it's not been on the TV screens for nearly 20 years, despite having been one of Britain's most watched t television programmes and exported to half the world's countries. But now the Benny Hill Show, Benny Hill Show, famous in the 1970s for the comedian's slapstick character, chasing scantily clad young women, but threatened by the cancel culture of the modern age, has made a surprise comeback on a nostalgic channel. This is great. It was just a bit of fun in the same sort of thing, I suppose, really, as the Carry On films. I mean, they're still on, aren't they? Maybe he took it a little bit further than them, but it, it's just in the same, just a bit of fun. The joke, of course, was always on him, not the girls. And basically, there'd be a lot of girls running around in bikinis and things like that. And um, he would be chasing after them or pretending to look up their skirts. I mean, just a bit of harmless fun, surely. Uh, the show, which consisted of short and often risque comedy sketches, made Hill a huge star, first on the BBC and then ITV, airing for four... That's how popular he was. Four decades from 1955. See, even before me? Four decades from 1955. Um, I've got a picture to show you. Actually, it's, it's a picture of two people. I'll wait for that a moment. Uh, but Hill, it was dumped by uh, Thames Television in 1989 amid fears from executives that his raucous and racy sense of humour was being some as sexist and vulgar. You know, people with no sense of humour, that's what I think. Perhaps you think differently. Always feel free to put a comment down there, OK? Um, a series of reruns which began last night now forms part of the festive schedule on Freeview channel That's TV Gold, which has been renamed That's TV Christmas for the season. So if you want it, look it up on your Freeview. That's TV Christmas. Um, let me see when it's on for you. When is Benny Hill on That's Christmas? Let's, have, let's see if I can find a... A time when it's on. Uh, do we have a schedule? I don't see a schedule there. No, do doesn't really. I don't really see a schedule. Uh, that's TV Christmas. Have we got a time on there? One minute. I found that found the channel there. Freeview. Doo -doo -doo. No, doesn't doesn't say when it's on. Sorry, I, I should have looked into that for you. Vera at the moment, thank you, Vera, I know is tapping away on her keyboard. Unfortunately, we're not live, uh, so I can't get the information. I'm sure she'll have it for you uh, by tomorrow if she's watching. Um, I don't know what you think about it. it. It was just very, very funny. Nothing was supposed to be taken seriously. And as I say, uh, the joke was always on him appearing as a little bit of a perv, a dirty old man. But I thought it was all quite humorous and all that. The joke was never, ever on the girls, you know. Uh, they had a bit of a, an interview on yesterday morning, I think on Daybreak TV, the ITV, ITV Breakfast, whatever that's called now. Um, and there were two women on there, one of whom was one of the Benny Hill girls. And she had nothing but praise from me. said he was a lovely, warm kind man you know and they all talked about how the show would be put together and all this and it all worked very well and then there was some other old bag on there who clearly had had a lot of facial surgery right who says she she said she was asked to be on it but she didn't want anything to do with it because she thought it was really sexist and vulgar and she didn't want anything to do with it why well, she's talking away none of her face is moving incidentally <laughs> I bet she wasn't really asked. She's just a bit, bit jealous because she was never asked, probably. But what do you think about Benny Hill? Um, is it 
something that you would want to watch again. Maybe you do think it's outrageous and, and against women. As a lot of people, of course, Miss World isn't on the telly anymore. Miss World. You know, I'm, I have to say, none of these girls are, are dragged kicking and screaming into a TV studio, are they? And told, you will now be on Miss World. They want to do, they want to be on it and they want to win. What's the problem? I, I just don't see the problem. It's the cancel culture again, isn't it? Cancel culture. Do you like Benny Hill? Perhaps you didn't watch it. I, I must admit, I didn't really watch it much. But it was of that time and it brings back just nostalgic mes memories for me. Not of that TV show necessarily, but of the time. You know what I mean? Well, if Benny Hill isn't good enough for you, there's another one coming up. Morecambe and Wise. They found another show. This is in the Daily Mirror. That last story was in the uh, Daily Mail. This story is in the Daily Mirror. The BBC are going to screen a long lost episode of Morecambe and Wise in full as a Christmas treat for fans after it was found in an attic by Eric Morecambe's son. Now, I was talking to my sister and brother-in-law about this earlier on and they reckon that they found something earlier on. Now, I can't remember this, but I think we've already had at some point over the last couple of years, an old Morgan and Wise that they found. Well, they found another one now uh, by Eric Morgan's son. The episode, which aired only once more than half, only once more than half a century ago, on October the eighth, nineteen seventy, and I probably would have watched this with my parents. I would have been six feet seven, six feet four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would have been seven. We loved Morgan and Wise, absolutely loved it. Um, it was watched at the time of an audience of 14 million people. I mean, these programmes, now even Saturday night BBC One programmes, they don't get anything near 14 million, do they, anymore? What does Strictly get? Let's have a look. Strictly, Strictly Ratings. Strictly Ratings. Do they get 14 million even now? Um... Let's have a look. Well, there's one, 3rd of October, 3rd of October. We can look at 3rd of October. Strictly Come Dancing ratings down to 8.8 .8 million. You know, in comparison to Morecambe and Wise, 14 million. They just don't get the rate. None of these shows get the ratings. I mean, <laughs> you want to go even lower, just look at Love Island and crap like that on the telly. Oh, why don't people watch it? Oh, it's because there's so much choice. No, it's not. It's because it's crap. That's why. That's why it's crap. Not like more common wise. Anyway, it's back on. Um, they say here uh, it's been painstakingly and lovingly restored, changed from black and white into colour. How clever is that? by a team of BBC experts. Gary Morgan, 65, uh, that's uh, Eric's son. Uh, he's 65 now. Uh, discovered a programme last near, year in a film canister marked only with a BBC stamp. But Eric probably nicked it. Well, <laughs> do you, I bet. I hope you don't nick stuff from work, do you? Who nicks stuff from work? I might have had the odd toilet roll over the years. Perhaps. <laughs> I'm telling you where from. Uh, when it screens next month, under the title of Morecambe and Wise, The Lost Tape, viewers will be watching the sixth instalment of the comedy duo's fourth series for the BBC, the first one to be screened on BBC One rather than BBC Two, because when they first started, they were on BBC Two. You know, um, and it's just fantastic news. Does it say when it's going to be here? Like, they don't give a time yet, one BBC source said. We're so excited to hear that this episode, long considered lost, still exists. This should be a real Christmas treat for comedy fans. It's a real delight. I will certainly be watching this. Absolutely. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Wouldn't miss this for the world. Now, does it say when it's going to be on? Um, the series has, that particular four series has been on DVD minus that particular episode. Um, but it, does, it doesn't yet give a time there. Uh, Eric Morecambe died in 1984 and Ernie Wise in 1999 these these people were huge stars and they were just so perfect at doing it there was you could never watch that and think oh that was a bit fake you know like you do some of them now huh you could never watch people like Morecambe and Wise 
uh, Mike Yarwood, Bruce Ford, all those old school, Jimmy Tarbutt. You could never look at that. Oh, that was a little bit fake. Now you watch the telly now and tell me you don't see fakeness. I mean, there are some people that carry it off. You know, um, Brad, um, oh, Blumineer, what's his name? He does that chase game, doesn't he? Uh, Bradley Walsh. You could never say he's fake. Michael McIntyre, he doesn't come across as fake, but a lot of them do. Anyway, uh, that's just a brilliant news. Um, what do you think? Are you looking forward to these old school type TV shows? There's a picture of here of them there. There we go. Left hand side there is Morgan and Wise in their heyday. And on the right is uh, Benny Hill. If you look carefully at Benny Hill, um, can you see those fingers on his left arm there? OK, that's actually a girl holding him, but I cut that out. <laughs> we can't can't be accused of copying photographs, dear. You know, in their entirety, we get a blooming copyright thing if we do anything like that. All right. So there we are, Benny Hill on the right there, and um, who was it now? Morecambe and Wiser on the left there. All right. Good. Let me know what you think of that. Email if you want to, my darlings. Uh, email address there: Chris at United Kingdom Talk uh, dot co. .uk is my email address. Uh, good news about the air conditioning. Um, chap who lives here on the caravan site, Reese is his name, he popped over yesterday morning, actually while I was doing the radio show, and uh, has had a look at it, and it requires, well, it, it might be the board gone, but he was saying um, he might change the board, the little circuit board, and a f the fault might have been caused by the motor. So he's advised changing the whole unit, which is uh, 165 quid to actually buy the unit. He's now ordered that. And um, it, it may may even be here tomorrow or Thursday. OK, it's going to come on one of those two days. So fantastic news. And uh, he's a love, really nice person, lovely man. I think he lives on the site with his missus. And um, I didn't know he does YouTube videos. He does YouTube videos, not of the job that he's doing, as in aircon. He does aircon and refrigeration. Refrigeration, I gather that's what he does for his job. Uh, they also have a YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel is Here's to Adventure. Now, be careful if you're going to look for it, okay? Because I spotted there is another channel called Here's to Adventure. What you would do is type it in with no spaces. It looks like there's no spaces. I'm going to spell it exactly for you. No um, apostrophe either. Here's to adventure, as in T-W-O, with, and the whole thing is one word, right? Here's to adventure. H-E-R-E-S-T-W-O-A-D-V-E-N-T-U-R-E. -E -E. It's all one word. You could do with another few subscribers. You know, can't we all? Do you know what I mean? Um, so have a little look at that, and I think you'll like it. They come across as a lovely couple. They they really do seem suited together. And last night, while I was at my sister's house, I was watching um, a video they made in Cambodia. I bet you don't know anyone that's been to Cambodia, do you? And they hired these two bikes and started cycling around and looking at, um, not monasteries, what do you call them? Temples temples with all beautiful things on and shows you the pubs and that and a bit like buying beer 50 cents for a beer <laughs> and they were hiring bikes two dollars a day just two dollars to hire a bike so that's cambodia i also note here that they've been to thailand um uh Ch chiang mai i don't know where that is chiang mai Elephant, uh, they've been to Malaysia, the Ukraine, Romania, and that's what they like to do. They like traveling. And on their tours, uh, they take little cameras as well, which is fantastic. She's lovely. His, his missus is lovely. She's really nice. But the pair of them just look right together. And again, it's one of those videos that there are certain people on YouTube. I mean, I just don't like them. There's one, but I won't I won't point them out because it's a bit unfair, really. And they're not it's not like they're massive stars on the telly, really. Uh, but there's one bloke and his missus who do also. Um, <clears throat> I think they just do UK tour type things. And I, I, I really don't like him at all. There's something about him that I do not like. Uh, as I say, I won't say who it is. And if you ask me, I won't tell you whether it's them or not. OK, perhaps you know them already. But these two and and then you look at other people like my sister and brother-in-law. They look right together, don't they? As as indeed these two. 
Reese and his uh, girlfriend. So once again, that YouTube channel, all one word, Here's to Adventure. H-E-R-E-S-T-W-O-A-D-V-E-N-T-U-R-E. And um, I don't... I, I'll take a picture of it so you know what to look for. And it's all one word, okay? Remember, that's all one word. Let me take a picture of this and I'll show it to you. All right, my, all right, my darlings? Um, one minute. I can't find my bleeding camera on this now. Where's that gone? There it is. Camera on here. Oh, it's not It's not going to come out too well, I'm afraid. Well, it might be me. Perhaps if I put my glasses on, <laughs> things might come into focus, might they? <laughs> Let's see. I, it may be that. Oh, that. That's better. There we go. Now you can see exactly what it looks like. There you go. Let's uh, hopefully. All right. Let's just zoom in on that there. Okay. That's the channel there. That's what you're looking for. So once you find that, give him a subscribe. Uh, perhaps if you send him a message, tell him I sent you along and give it a try. It's really good. Very good indeed. All right. Anyway, so fingers crossed we might have the um, heating sorted uh, before the end of the week. I'm going back to my home on Thursday. I'm not going to do the long drive anymore um, down to London on the same day that I do my job, uh, which is Friday night. I used to leave here at half past two in the afternoon on a Friday, get to work 6.30, set up, do the job and go home. I found that incredibly tiring. Um, I would get to work and be tired, you know, so I'm not doing it anymore. What I'm going to do is drive home probably Thursday evening. I'll probably be home sort of around about 10, 11 o'clock. And then I'm in position to go to work the next day. Um, economically speaking, it's not it's not the best way to do it because then I've added another journey and another 30 miles uh, for buying petrol and that sort of thing. But, you know, it. it It'd be a lot easier for me. So that's it. Uh, talking of air conditioning, I mentioned to you I've now got back out of my shed my um, gas fire, which I bought um, a couple of years ago now. And I bought it before I had the, the warm and cold air things put in. So it's been in the shed for about two and a half years. I've got that back out of the shed. And it is luxury having a fire in front of you. It's, it's, it's very akin to actually having a log fire in front of you but this this portable gas fire which i'm going to show you now here it is and this was me the other night there you go look at that oh it's just luxurious having that on now if you look really closely you'll see can you see at the bottom there the little flame is burning blue and that indicates that it's burning safely okay if that flame was yellow or orange then you'd have a problem and you must turn it off immediately, uh, carbon monoxide. But as I say, that's perfectly all right. That's on full blast. And the heat that that chucks off is astounding. Not only does it come out the front there, you can't quite see, but at the top of the heater are lots of little slots and the heat pours out the top there. And when I've got that on, I just open all the other doors in the caravan and it heats the whole thing up. All right, so I, th I thought I'd just show you that uh, heater. But you know what? I think I'm going to leave it there now. I'm going to leave it now in that living room. And in future, when it's really cold, I'll turn the electric heating off and put that on. There's something about that. You, you, you don't get the same sort of effect sitting in a house with central heating or warm air heating or air, air source heat pumps. The very fact that you've got something glowing in front of you and it's and it's blood oh it's just wonderful so i think i'm gonna leave that in there now i'll just leave it in the room uh, you can't see it there um but i have now put where is it again i've now put no you can't see it there i've actually got two large ceramic tiles in front of that because well, i was a little bit concerned that it's blasting and that the floor would heat up quite a lot um, and it's carpet. You, you, I mean, it wouldn't get so hot you can't touch it. It would be on the hotter side of warm, if you see what I mean, without actually being hot. I was a little bit concerned about that. So what I've done, my sister gave me two tiles to put down so they're directly in front, which should take the heat up. Now, talking of my sister, um, I came across, while well, I was at my sister's house last night, um, Martin was showing one of his latest videos, um, which was him... Uh, what was he doing? Painting? Was he painting a fence? We watched. We had a cup. I think it was a, a video of him painting a fence. And um, for some reason, I can't remember why it was now. But uh, 
a picture of my sister came up, which I quickly snapped to show you. Uh, and here she is here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and she said, oh, don't show that. I said, well, hang on a minute. It's been on, it's been on your husband's video, so I'm going to show it. Now, I'm not quite sure what's upset her there. <laughs> she says she was trying on glasses. But I mean, I, I don't think she had enough time to comb her ear. But isn't it amazing? I am older than her. And you'll find this very hard to believe. When you look at my pretty little face there, right? OK, look how much younger I look to my sister there. And also so much happier. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be happier. Who do you think looks looks um looks younger? Me in front of my lovely warm fire or my sister? There you go. Something for you to join in. <laughs> I know I often bring up it was the same when we were doing the live shows. I often bring up all these subjects and no one joins into any of them. It's just a quick hello or something like that. So there you go. Something really simple for you this time. Who looks older? Me? No, I don't think so. Or my lovely sister. Stick a comment <laughs> underneath the video. Or, of course, you can send an email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. I also wanted to show you, and I'm really pleased about this. Do you remember many, many months ago, I told you I gave my uh, Jimmy, my nephew, is a big fan. Uh, he's the younger nephew. He's 24. He's a big fan of the Rat Pack in particular Frank Sinatra. In fact, uh, his son, he's got a, a little uh, uh, baby boy with his girlfriend Charlotte. His son has been named Frank. And I, I popped over, as I say, yesterday, and uh, I saw Frank. Who's, they get big so quickly, don't they? He was a bit ratty, Frank, last night because he just had some injections, you know, the... Um, uh, Hooping cough, and I'm not quite sure what ones he had now. Is it all in one injection, or do you have to have separate ones? I'm not quite sure what they did. Anyway, so it was a, it was a little bit uncomfortable last night after having the injections. Um, but um, I gave my nephew uh, one of my old Technics turntables, which I used to DJ at. I would turn up these these turntables must be 18, 20. I reckon they must be, I reckon they're about 40 years old, 35 to 40 years old. Technics 1210 turntables, they were industry standard. All the best DJs had them. I'm not quite sure why I had one too, but I did. Um, some time ago, I sold one of them to the manager of another pub and I kept this other one. And it's just sitting in the cupboard. You know, it is worth actually quite a lot of money. They are worth quite a lot of the money, those Technics 1210s. But as uh, Jimmy was interested in it, and he likes records. He likes records. I got rid of all mine. He seeks out old LP records, actually, which reminds me, I've actually got a case of records that I want to give to him. Um, and he's got all these records in there, and he's got the turntable, and I said, I think there's something wrong with it. I'm not quite sure what. The arm wasn't moving properly. Anyway, it's fixed it. It's fixed it, and it looks fantastic. And when I was over there last night, he said, look, Chris, I fixed it. And he showed me his turntable, and there it is going around playing. I think he had Elvis Presley on last night. And uh, it just... I'm, I'm sorry, it's a different sound to vinyl, to CDs. I mean, it really... It's a much warmer sound. And you don't really get that until... You just start listening to CDs and MP3s. I mean, an MP3, it's, it's just a computer file, isn't it? There's nothing there. You know, whether it's a little iPod or all your music's on here, right? There's nothing to look at. It's a bit like a show. And he put on a record last night. And his turntable's going around and it sounded fantastic. Here it is here, look. I took a little video of it last night. There you go. That's his now fully working turntable. The amount of people over the years I entertained with that turntable. And you can see the records under there as well. Um, it's a proper little home he's got there. This is half of my sister's house, actually, that they're living in. And they've put a, a tree up as well there. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that a lovely little thing there? All right, so I wanted to show you his Technics uh, turntable there. Okay. Um, oh, we've upset someone, apparently. Oh, 
we've upset someone. Are you ready for this? And then I'll do your comments after this. Oh, you won't believe who I've upset. Martin, my brother-in-law. Oh, you couldn't believe the asshole. Honestly. Now, you may remember on yesterday's show, I said to you about my water heater has now been repaired by me. It needed new batteries in the ignition unit. If you're wondering the whole story, watch yesterday's show, OK, which should be directly underneath this one, I think, or above it, one of the two. Uh, but I tell you exactly what happened. Anyway, and I mentioned on there that a lot of people had looked at this. Two plumbers, my nephew and my brother-in-law. And that was the thing. And none of them were able to fix it. Well, of course, he didn't look at it. I got that wrong. He didn't look at it. However, you know, over a period of time, he knows about it. And I would have thought he'd have said to me, have you tried the batteries in the uh, ignition system? Well, yeah, that's what I would have thought. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, did I? I didn't. He didn't say anything. So that's what I meant by that. And I, he didn't actually look at the boiler itself because he's not gas trained or anything like that. Well, apparently I said that yesterday. And I'm sure I did. Oh, he's on the phone, screaming and shouting down the phone, for God's sake, man. Because, of course, he can fix anything, generally. He can, he can fix it. He, and if he can't fix something, he'll watch, same as my nephew, actually, he'll watch a YouTube video of something being repaired and then do it. So I have to issue a retraction of this... Hello, hello, I want a retraction. Oh, he was screaming and shouting down the phone. Poor Sharon had to rush outside and pour a bucket of water over him. He was so angry. So we have to retract that statement that Martin had not been able to fix the boiler because he didn't look at it. Is that all right? Is that retraction all right, lovey? I mean, what else do you want? A bloody book voucher or something for five quid? Oh, dear me. All right, there we are. So that was an incorrectness on my part. Now, how long have we been... Oh, my God, we've been nearly been on here for half an hour. These are only supposed to be 15 minutes long. <laughs> if you're new, hello. Welcome. I hope you like my little thing. It's a bit niche, I know that. We don't have millions of subscribers all over the world, but there you go. We're happy enough doing it. Just a couple of comments um, from yesterday's show, boys. Oh, by the way, uh, I'd like to thank someone. Um, it's uh, Paul Adamson. And um, he's recently... I, I, I can't remember if I read you the story now. Netflix have lost Star Trek Voyager. Um, we were all looking forward to the new series, which I think would have started by now. It's been pulled off there by its makers, who are now going to put it on Paramount um, streaming service, which isn't even on yet. And we're so disappointed. Anyway, thank you very much, Paul, uh, for the link that you sent me. That's all I want to say. I'll, um, I'll do that. I really appreciate you sending me that link. If possible, could you send me other links as they become available? All right, that's that's all I can really say on that subject. But thank you very much for the link there, Paul. Uh, yes, um, unfortunately, Star Trek's not going to be on Netflix. The story here, which I meant to read you, bad news Trek is Netflix has officially lost the rights to Star Trek Discovery with the show now exclusive to Paramount Plus in every region. And it's not even on yet, Paramount Plus here in the UK. So we've got to wait for that to come. And if you want to watch it, you're going to have another subscription. Well, I won't be doing that. I just won't watch it. I mean, this is just getting silly now, isn't it? Eh? Got to subscribe to that. that. And it all adds up. Be wary of those monthly outgoings. It may be, oh, it's only another fiver here. And it's a and before you know, you're spending 50. I mean, those of you that have got Sky Television know just how expensive stuff is. All I've got is Netflix and Amazon. Uh, Amazon. I don't really use the Amazon one. I must admit that. Hardly ever look at Amazon. Amazon. Oh, what's it called? Amazon streaming. Some hard. I've, I've only got that for the free delivery of the parcels. Really? That's the only reason. But I won't be subscribing to anything else. One's enough for me. Netflix, then that's it. Just won't watch it then. Fair enough. Maybe it'll appear at some point in the future. I'm not subscribing to another channel. I don't watch loads of channel ends, TV channels anyway. So thanks so much to uh, Paul Adamson for that. I also hear on the grapevine from my friend um, DJ Chris that um, Amazon... 
what is it called? Amazon Streaming. You know the thing I mean. Amazon Streaming. I also hear from DJ Chris that they have now lost the rights to Picard. Now, I've looked on the news things for this, but I have yet to see that. I, I can't find the story anyway. So don't take that as 100% yet, all right? Uh, before I see it... But, uh, uh, before I can find the story. I can't find the story at the moment, but DJ Chris uh, is a big Star Trek fan, uh, as indeed I am. And I he says that uh, that's not now going to be on Amazon. That's going to be somewhere else. Mad, isn't it? They all want a little bit of money. Um, just one uh, comment today, boys and girls, uh, from John Parrish. Morning, John, who says, Well done, Chris. Uh, I really hope you sorted the water heater out. Well, it's still on now. It's working perfectly, working perfectly, thank you. He says, it reminded me of a time when I was about 22 working on a massive new boiler in a hospital in Zambia. And he says, I mean, it was huge. Uh, it wouldn't fire up. Had all the top specialists come and check it out, even flew in from South Africa to check it out. Nothing. One day I was on my own and I thought, what if I changed the three supply fuses 60 amps each to 80 amps. What's the worst that could happen, as it never worked for a month anyway? He said he was younger then, so a bit daring. Bugger me, it worked perfectly. <laughs> he sorted it out. Lots of red-faced engineers all thought each other check that. As you can imagine, I felt the dogs be, you know, uh, true. I'll never forget that. Always, and he's absolutely right, always check the obvious, not the most technical. Thanks for your kind words, uh, reference uh, his, uh, his uh, nicely decorated kitchen, I have to say. And yeah, you're so right, you know, always check the obvious. I mean, really, it's usually the batteries or a restart, you know, one of those things in it. Anyway, thanks for watching the show today. Uh, as always, leave a comment or you can send an email to uh, my email address there, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have a nice Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.